Where is God in my life? How do I experience Christ? These are questions that are often presented to us as priests. Where people will come and they will tell us, God feels distant from us. He seems silent. And for those of us, in which case we don't feel this God missing in our lives, perhaps more often than not, it's because we've substituted the living God with an idea of God, which in the end is nothing more than an idol. We do not have an experience of the living God. The answer to these problems is given to us in today's gospel reading. The Lord said, if anyone wishes to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. If we do not, if we avoid that cross, we choose not to follow the Lord, we cannot experience Pascha. There will be for us no Passover from death to life. So on this day of the Sunday of the cross, we must ask ourselves, how far are we from the cross? It seems to me, myself first and foremost, We are quite far from the cross. You see, my friends, there is a disease that we suffer from in the modern world, and perhaps nowhere more than in this country. We do all that we can to avoid discomfort, to avoid inconvenience. How can we imagine that we will take up a cross if we're unable to even allow ourselves to become discomfortable for our Christ? Perhaps we pray, we fast, We help our neighbors or strangers. We come to church. And yet, how often do we stop any one of these things the very moment that it becomes uncomfortable or inconvenient? Or if in my case, when that discomfort or inconvenience is Impossible to get out of it. And my presbytera will assure you this is true. I complain about it. And complain about it. What does it look like to take up that cross? To follow the Lord? The early years after the Russian Revolution when the civil war was coming to an end between the Red Army and the White Army, a village in which for a long period of time the White Army, the anti-communists, had put up a strong defense, finally fell to the Red Army. And a young woman who had two children, whose husband had been a general in the white army knew that her time had come to an end. She had two very small children and was unable to flee. So she went outside of the village and hid in an abandoned house. And that night she heard a knock on the door 
And it was one of her neighbors, another young woman named Natalia. Natalia said to her, you must flee. They know where you are and they will shoot you. The woman looked at her two small children and she said, I can't. I can't flee with these two children. Both are death sentences. Natalia said to her, you don't have to run. When the soldiers come to this house, I will remain and I will say to them that I am you. The woman says, how can you do this? Then you will be shot. And Natalia says, I have no children, you have two. And she suffered martyrdom. This, my friends, is what it looks like to take up our cross and follow the Lord. If we truly desire to encounter Christ in our prayer, and are unable to follow the Lord to Gethsemane, at least let us pray until we experience a little discomfort, stand a little longer, wake up a little earlier. With our fasting, how often, and again, I'm guilty of this, I follow the letter of the law, and yet, how seldom do I experience any hunger? We desire to experience the providence of God, to have that tangible experience where we can say God was here in our life of giving alms and stewardship. Let us not stop as soon as it becomes uncomfortable, but let us give. Let us deny ourselves even just a little bit, each day. Let us take up our cross, or at least not free, flee from inconvenience or discomfort. And let us follow Christ. For if we follow him, the story, as we all know, does not end with Golgotha, but with the light coming forth from the empty tomb. Some of us, looking at the story of Natalia or the death of our Lord on the cross, will say, this, Father Micah, seems too heavy for us. It will conclude with something that may seem a bit contradictory. Our Christ also said, my burden is light and my yoke is easy. How can this be? My friends, because we do not carry the cross alone. Our Lord will give us grace if we do not flee from it. If we remain planted within the church like Moses when his arms could no longer be held up and we unable to carry our cross, the church will come and lift up our arms. One of the great saints of the 20th century was a priest named Demetrios. And when he was born, he was a very sickly child. And they didn't think that he was able to survive, so the whole family gathered around him this faithful Orthodox family. And they prayed. They had already done an emergency baptism for him. And one of the family members walked up to him and took that little baby's hand and made three fingers and did the sign of the cross. 
thinking if this child won't survive the night, at least that last action will be the cross. The church will help us bear that cross. Years later, Demetrius, having survived Exiled from Russia, finding himself in Paris during the Second World War, followed Christ and his love for the neighbor. And because of the work that he was doing in the resistance, particularly to save the lives of the Jewish people, he was sent to a concentration camp. And there, from one of his fellow camp members, we learn of his end. How he would give up the little food that he had to those that needed it more until there was nothing left for himself. They sent him to a tent they called the medical center, but there was really nothing there. And there he was laying there next to another Russian man. And St. Demetrius turned to him and said, I'm unable to lift my hand to make the sign of the cross. Take my hand in yours and make the sign over me. And so it was that St. Demetrius entered into the kingdom of God in glory, having borne the cross of our Christ. May each and every one of us, through the grace of Christ, the intercessions of the saints, the prayers of each other, take up our cross and follow the Lord. Amen.